It is a privilege to be with you all. Uh, today, as we open in, in Luke 23, we're going to begin in verse 1. Uh, this is right in the middle of Jesus' trial. It's hard to call it a trial, but in any case, Jesus' trial before Pilate and before Herod, uh, leading right up to his crucifixion, right to the point of, of where he loses his life for our sake. So Luke 23, verses 1 to 25. Then the whole assembly rose and led, led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payments of, of taxes to Caesar and claims to be the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replies. And then Pilate announced to the chief priest and the crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teachings. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been waiting to see him. For what, he, for what he had heard about him, uh, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. And then Herod, his soldiers, ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends before they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests and rulers of the, and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! And for the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he, that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. Today, as we go in here with Pilate and Herod's examination of Jesus, their trials uh, of the Messiah, uh, we're really continuing looking at responses to Jesus. We've seen how Peter denied Jesus, how Judas betrayed Jesus, how the religious leaders had these trumped up charges against him. But what about the people we see here today? Let me say Herod first. Herod essentially represents those who just want to see a sign from Jesus, who just want something big and flashy, who just want uh, uh, the, the coolest, greatest um, uh, aspect of their faith or any faith. We also see the mob who's swayed by the opinion of the religious leaders. The mob who, who vehemently opposes Jesus. And then, of course, Pilate, who really doesn't want to take sides. He really wants nothing to do with Jesus. But because of his uh, desire to please the crowds in order to keep the peace and please his authorities, he rejects Jesus and abandons him to death. Now, of course, we know God's hand is on this, and God is the one who's actually leading Jesus to die to pay the penalty of our sins. Jesus willingly gives his life to pay for our sins. We know that ultimately it's God's will uh, carried out through, through Jesus' obedience and submission, but the response of these today and yesterday Show us that everyone has to make a decision. Everyone will make a decision. We can find some kind of 
uh, instruction or guidance maybe as we look to those that we share Christ with and how they respond. Some will immediately reject Jesus because he's not what they expect. Some will, will, will abandon Jesus when the going gets tough. Some will try and please others and please the crowds and end up losing their faith. And some will vehemently and violently oppose Jesus. But the fact of the matter is, all of these people end up in the same result. Because we know that one day when Jesus returns and calls his people home and brings judgment on those who've rejected him, the result will be eternal separation from God. All of these who re reject Jesus for whatever reason will spend their eternity in torment and punishment. Ladies and gentlemen, we see here a Savior who willingly walks to his death, providing no defense, exercising no power, doing nothing to stop the inevitable. Why? Because of his love. It's Jesus' love that compelled him to walk forward. Love for you and love for me. This is the same love that we should have that should compel us to keep sharing with people, no matter what their response is, no matter how they reject or, or in what ways they speak to us, the ways they act towards us. The love of Jesus compelled him to go willingly to his death, and the love of Jesus compels us to share the message so that others might have life. This is our role. This is our call. This is what Jesus has for us to be about. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word and for your sacrifice. Help us to take the message to those who are rejecting, those who haven't heard, those who've maybe rejected many times, or those who just uh, need to hear one more time. Help us to be faithful no matter what the response Help us to follow Jesus' example and give of ourselves so that others might have life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a great rest of the day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.